In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. With your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered, tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, Why are you untying it? you will answer, The master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? They answered, The master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road, and now, as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, even if they kept silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us ask God to bless these palm branches. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exultation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we process in, if you'll hold your branches in the air, I'll be sprinkling holy water. Even if you don't get any holy water on your branches, it's blessing the whole church. Good afternoon and welcome to St. Barnabas. Our opening hymn will be All Glory, Loud, and Honor, number 138, in the Breaking Bread Hymnal, number 138.
Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Proclaim your name to my brethren. To my 
The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you forth without, without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? They replied, he said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked, and indeed what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still, not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. 
He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, A short while later, someone else saw him and said, But Peter answered, About an hour later, still another insisted, But Peter said, Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, <coughs> But he replied to them, if I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked. He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, Pilate asked him. He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is the sign of the people On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. 
Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last.
The centurion, who witnessed what had happened, glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts, but all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw this, these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. And when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. As we listen to the reading of the Passion, we might imagine ourselves on that first Good Friday standing at the foot of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Standing there beside us would be, of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary Magdalene, and John the Apostle. We would look up at that cross and see Jesus suffering, bleeding, struggling to breathe. And we might, in our compassion, have a desire to embrace Jesus, but he's out of reach. To do so, we would have to climb up on a ladder. And once we were on that ladder, we would re realize that the body of Jesus, of course, is nailed to that cross. It would be impossible to embrace Jesus without also embracing the cross. Now, Jesus' body, at this point, is exhausted from carrying the cross. He's bleeding from the terrible scourging he received from the Romans. And so, again, to embrace Jesus will mean that we ourselves will have to become covered in his sweat and in his blood. Upon the head of Jesus is a crown made of thorns to mock him since he said he was the king of the Jews. And those long thorns in that crown were piercing the skin of Jesus' head, even down to the skull itself. If we really wish to embrace Jesus hanging there and press our head against his own, then that means those very thorns are going to pierce our head as well. It's impossible for us to embrace Jesus without embracing the cross, without becoming stained with his blood, without feeling his pain. But sometimes we all imagine a relationship with Jesus which excludes the cross. Now, we only want to be comforted by Jesus in such a relationship. We want to share in his joy. Peter thought such a relationship with Jesus was possible as well, but Peter's rejection of the cross in that relationship led to his denial of his best friend three different times. Think about what Jesus once said to his disciples and to us. He said, whoever wishes to be my disciple must take up his cross daily and follow me. So again, we realize we cannot embrace Jesus without embracing the cross. Now to embrace us, Jesus had to embrace the cross. And taking up his cross, he was carrying our own sins. He took our sufferings to himself. He even experienced death for each one of us. You see, hanging there on the cross was not just one man suffering one particular death. No, Jesus on the cross, because he was God's son, was suffering every pain, 
every sorrow of every human being ever to be born into this world until the end of time. And upon that cross, Jesus was experiencing countless deaths. It wasn't just one man dying, he was every person dying. And by embracing us, Jesus accepted even our condemnation, the condemnation which was rightfully ours. And so upon the cross, Jesus suffered the pains of hell so that we would be spared from eternal damnation. No, Jesus was not ashamed to embrace us. And Jesus does not turn away from us in disgust. Out of his love for us, Jesus humbled himself to bear the cross of our salvation. Jesus is not ashamed to embrace us when we're bad. And Jesus does not turn away from us in our pain, but he makes it his own. You know, as Christians, it's impossible for us to suffer alone because our sufferings have already become the sufferings of Jesus long ago upon that cross. When Jesus finds us lost, he comes to find us. When we face death, we don't face it alone. Jesus is there already ahead of us, calling us to pass through death to life. So when our hour comes, we won't have to be afraid. Jesus is going to say, I already did this for you. All you have to do is take me by the hand and come home. For in embracing us, Jesus embraced the cross. And through his death, he destroyed death and opened to us the kingdom of eternal life. To embrace us, it was necessary for Jesus to embrace the cross. Likewise, it's impossible for us to embrace Jesus unless we embrace that same cross. Amen. Now let us profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting now in God to hear us when we call upon him, let us pray together as one in the name of Jesus. For the church, may Jesus our Savior keep us faithful and lead us the way of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, May God's love soften the hearts and minds of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all preparing to enter the church, may the Holy Spirit fill them with the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Jeannie Hobbs, Judy Jones, and those in today's bulletin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Bonnie Pickard, wife of Bill Pickard, Gerald Sterich, father of Michael Sterich, Paul Mayer, 
brother of Kathy Delpha and Patty Ralston. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Bob Marshall, who's remembered this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Almighty Father, we commit ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our gifts, let us sing together, Worthy is the Lamb, number 579 in the Breaking Bread Hymnal. Number 579 in the Breaking Bread Hymnal. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, 
for though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by our cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we receive the body and blood of Jesus, let us sing Behold the Lamb, number 336 in the Breaking Bread Hymnal, number 336.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing together, Were You There? Number 146 in the Breaking Bread Hymnal. Number 146. We'll sing all three verses. is me to dream. 